bombshell new audio appears to show a whistleblower privately warned embattled Georgia DA Fonnie Willis that her top aide was abusing federal funds. Now, in the audio, Willis appears to agree with this whistleblower and say that she'd look into it. Yet a little less than two months later, the staffer who raised the concerns was fired. Let's take a listen to that audio. He told everybody in front of Crystal, Deontay, everybody, we're going to get MacBooks. We're going to do that. We're going to get swag. We're going to use it for travel. I said, you cannot do that. It's a very, very specific grant. Took me off. I questioned Junior DA. There's kids in there from out of the, the, um, the county. All this took me off Junior DA. I did not want to do it. He made it look as if I wasn't doing what I needed to do because I questioned him. Because so, I knew for a fact Mr. Cuffey respectfully did not know what he was doing, so, period. So I respect that is your assessment. Um, it was clear to me that you and Mr. Cuffey were not getting along. And I'm not saying that your assessment is wrong. I want you to really listen to the words I'm saying. Cuffey, and this is my personal opinion to one woman to another, is dangerous to your administration. Yeah, so the implication here is that this whistleblower came forward about another employee who wanted to misuse grant funds. And after coming forward in that kind of, you know, nervous, heated, excited way that we just heard, she was the one that was ultimately fired. Now, you also did hear Fonnie Willis say, I know that you guys have been having trouble at work. So this is a snippet of a broader circumstance. Who right. knows? There's other reasons that people could be fired. Sometimes people are substantively in the right, but there are employment problems that absolutely out outstrip the conflict at issue here. Who knows? Absolutely. We should proceed cautiously. This, so this whistleblower who was fired um, spoke to the Free Beacon, the Washington Free Beacon, and provided this audio. But I have to say, what's alleged in here is extremely serious. Um, what the whistleblower says is that this grant, and the whistleblower worked uh, doing, uh, in the DA, in Fonnie Wilson's office, doing work with um, nonviolent juvenile offenders. Um, you know, this is important work. Um, that they received a grant from the federal government earmarked for the creation of a center of youth empowerment and gang prevention. Again, that sounds like a very worthy cause for public funding. And, and what she says is that this other employee, Michael Cuffey, wanted to use it to purchase swag, computers, and travel um, to you know misuse funds for the greater enjoyment of the office. And she went to Fonnie Wills and said, he can't do that. That's not what, what it's for. This is exactly what we want. This is what everyone wants. When there's misuse of public funding for government employees to speak up and report it and say something about it. That's what we all want. So good for her for doing that. Um, and Fonnie Willis there is trying to, you know, put her, calm her down. It, it's clear this was a, you know, a difficult workplace that she didn't get along with the person. Fonnie Willis tries to calm her down, and then we don't know what happens, but she lets her go two months later. Um, a very serious accusation that we would need to learn more about. Obviously, we need to hear the other side of the story. But um, I'm glad this person has come forward because, frankly, it, independent of the Trump case, it really doesn't have anything to do with the it Trump case. It with could Trump speak, case. you know, further to just Fannie Willis's judgment. Obviously, she's involved in this um, other um, uh, national story about uh, whether she similarly misappropriate whether she herself misappropriated public funds by uh, by hiring her uh, her lover at the time, who's now uh, divorcing his wife, and it, they are a couple, it seems to be, and then that he, not that hiring him was necessarily wrong, but then he took her on trips, so it was in some indirect way a kickback, um, and that's all coming out um, through his own, this Nathan Wade, his uh, divorce um, action going on. Right. So, again, the reason this is a national story at all uh, is because there has been a political effort. I don't that's not a value judgment. I think that's just yeah. descriptive. A political effort to undermine the Georgia case against Donald Trump by having increased scrutiny at Fonnie Willis. And it's dug up now both the allegation that she hired her lover who was underqualified to do the work and overpaid to do the work uh, in this kind of a uh, soft, you know, kind of a kickback scheme. And now also that she may have retaliated against a whistleblower again unsubstantiated at this point. We don't know if the other person that was whistleblown on was also fired. Maybe there was a lot of discord in the office and people had to be fired for interpersonal reasons. We really don't know. But that does seem to be the implication. But in, in a lot of ways, I don't know, we don't need this story to know that Fonnie Willis has already demonstrated bad judgment yeah. in the context of um, yeah. adjudicating Donald Trump's if case. If this is true, in some ways, this is worse. 
It's sometimes it's worth it. It's very it's, bad. The, the point is that Fonnie Willis, even if it was just mere optics, there was an interesting write-up in, in Politico a few days ago um, written by Ankush uh, Karadori. And they made the argument that, you know, having a relationship isn't illegal, even having a relationship with someone that you're working with, even if it's cheating, they're cheating on their spouse. None of those things are illegal, whatever you think the ethical implications of them are. Um, but the question is whether or not he, she, he was overpaid and whether or not he was hired when otherwise he wouldn't have been hired because right. it inured to the personal benefit of Fonnie Willis, which, again, I think distinguishes it from the Cory Bush case, where at least the Congressional Budget, uh, Congressional Ethics Office looked at this and said, well, he is qualified to work security for her, and he is getting paid a standard amount, and she does have these real security needs based on the number of threats that she's getting. This Fonnie Willis stuff— is different, and the, the, the case that this political argument makes is that the, her worst crime is basically how she's addressed it since the scandal has come out. She hasn't taken on the crit criticisms head on at all. She's made these vague allusions to the fact that she is being attacked for, for, racial, being re for re re racial reasons. And uh, this person says, at the end of the day, you just have to address fraud accusations like this quickly and then deal with it. The case can be reassigned to a different prosecutor. There's a lot of political interests the Democrats have in resolving this and moving on. And instead of doing that, she seems to be treading water. Uh, she has to make a response filing on February 2nd, as I understand it. And, you know, the article says, well, she's in her rights to wait until then to respond in a more fulsome manner. But in the interim, her reputation is just getting worse and worse. And she's taking down with it the integrity of this important yeah. case against Donald Trump. And, and this whistleblower, I didn't use her name, her name, but her name is Amanda Timpson. She has been named. This isn't an anonymous accusation against, uh, against um, Fonnie Willis. She has come forward to present her side of the story. She gave audio to support her side of the story. You know, she's, because I always caution, you can only do so much with people anonymously complaining about the environment in their, in their work. I mean, that's true of whoever the administration is. It gets to be a little, like the media loves it. Like, oh, insider in X office says, Everything's dysfunctional, everything's bad, and this person's horrible. Okay, well, if you're not going to say it on the record, if you're not going to put your own credibility at stake, we can only do so much with it. She's come forward, which I think is, a, is, a, is important in a, in a case like this, and we would like to hear yeah. more about the situation. Um, and it doesn't, impact, doesn't really impact their argument against Trump, but it does look very bad. Uh, just get to look rid bad of her. DA. I just yeah. can't for the life of me understand why... She's not gone already, for the sake of the country. Democratic donors should be lining up to say, I'm going to give you some cushy job elsewhere if you just stepped out from this case and let it proceed, because the stakes are just so much higher than you. Obviously, she has pri I mean, sorry, yeah. I shouldn't say that. But the implication is that, she, you know, she— I mean, I don't quite know what the precise mechanism is here. Which Could she— recuse herself and they have have appointed some other DA to handle it? Does she need to actually exit the office? I don't know. No, I don't think she has to exit the office like at all. That. But I think the case can be reassigned yeah, to a new prosecutor. It should not be handled by her at this point. Um, and even if it's not her, like move the partner at the very least off of the case. But I, it just, this is so unnecessary. Why, why are we holding on to these two people being involved? I just don't get it. Fun stuff. More rising right after this.